Hi folks, uh, thanks for joining me. This is part two for molding and casting vintage uh, radio knobs. I appreciate everyone that took time to uh, view part one. Anyway, this is one of the uh, two castings that I completed here for the uh, little Peter Pan radio. And again, it turned out uh, really well. Again, a few imperfections in the original knob. Some of that transferred over to the silicone mold. And then the casting itself, again, not doing any uh, vacuum degassing or pressure casting. There's a few other imperfections here. But again, the uh, radio itself is uh, what dates back to uh, 1933 to 1935. So uh, I don't need the uh, knobs to look uh, perfect, but uh, this is fairly close to perfect as it is. Anyway, part two, let's move along here. I just want to spend some time and show you guys the uh, hardware that I actually installed and the steps that I took to be able to get a nice connection here between the uh, control stem back to the knob itself where when you turn this thing uh, you're not uh, finding yourself with the set screw loosening up and uh, swiveling around on the uh, stem itself. So um, let's uh, move along and I'll show you the steps here that I took to uh, get a nice uh, solid connection. Okay, thanks again for checking out those pictures on the uh, Peter Pan with it all back together. I apologize for some of the lighting conditions there. It was a little dark and the sun was uh, kind of facing me. And I was using some overhead lights. Anyway, you're looking at my original uh, garage knob. And this was the uh, only one that I had. I think it was one good knob that uh, I had on the uh, garage radio as well. So I took advantage of uh, doing the molding and casting and uh, went on and reproduced uh, four knobs, or actually five, for uh, my garage radio as well. So to be six, uh, counting the original here. Now the original uh, mold that I created was uh, pretty bumpy because uh, this particular knob had a lot of buildup on it, lacquers and such. And uh, you can see when I created the mold and did the casting, you can see all the raised area and the bumps here. That's showing up. So uh, not really high quality. So I took time to uh, drop the knob in some uh, lacquer thinner and, you know, completely uh, strip the old uh, finish off of it. And then I had to use a, a sealing um, compound that uh, Smoothon has for a wooden type of uh, knobs or wooden articles that need to be uh, molded and uh, applied that uh, material to the knob and created a new mold. Anyway, after that mold was completed, um, I got close color-wise to what I was looking for and then with a few uh, shots of some toner lacquers, again just blending the uh, toner lacquers together, um, you're looking at my uh, reproductions here if that's uh, showing up. Hopefully it is under the lighting conditions, but um, it's kind of a brownish red tint and that's what I was looking for. And um, these knobs uh, turned out uh, really, really great. So I'll be getting that garage radio uh, back together uh, real soon and I'll show these, uh, you know, back off here in a future uh, video. Anyway, we'll use the uh, garage knob as my example again. You can see the uh, this particular knob has a brass insert piece, and uh, that's around three eighths of an inch or so outside diameter, and just uh, north of um, a quarter of an inch inside. So uh, I was just looking for some uh, material to use, and I'm sure I could uh, have located some brass tubing, but uh, I elected here to uh, let me get this out of the way. Elected just to go with some uh, stainless steel tubing. Um, but again, that would be your preference if you would really want to go with something this heavy duty. Uh, this is really thick. Uh, let's look at the specs. This is a 316L uh, stainless tube. Uh, it was uh, 12 inches in length when I started. Again, it has an outside diameter itself of uh, 3 eighths of an inch and the inside diameter is just above that uh, quarter of an inch at uh, 0.277 inches and the uh, wall thickness itself on this is 0 0.049 inches so again uh, since i'll be drilling a hole and uh, using a tap 
Um, it's uh, definitely uh, thick enough and rigid enough to hold a, a nice set screw very firmly. Again, I probably could have used uh, brass, which is uh, definitely softer, and uh, it would have most likely still worked. So the other items I ended up ordering here, again, was a, a tap and drill combo. I really didn't need that. I ended up finding my uh, 6-32 tap. Um, in my toolbox buried in the bottom so it wasn't in my set and uh, just poor organization on my part so now I have to but I have the uh, number 36 bit as well so uh, that sizes everything uh, supposedly correctly for the uh, tap itself and then uh, you can see I've got uh, two assortments of um, set screws so again these set screws themselves they're socket head set screws and uh, you can use a, a 1 16th of an inch Allen wrench to get in there. And I like that a lot better than your uh, typical uh, flathead screwdriver for a lot of the vintage uh, radio knobs. And you can see again, looking here, these are 632 by uh, 3 8 um, These are, I found to be just a little bit long. I could cut them down just a bit. And again, that was for the uh, garad knob reproductions as well as the Peter Pan. And the one I actually went with, again, another 6x32, these are 3 sixteenths of an inch. So uh, this uh, allows that uh, screw itself to be uh, countersunk more and uh, kind of out of sight. But um, I could see I'll end up using these others probably at uh, some point in time. When I drilled the, uh, um, the hole here for my... Uh, uh, tap location as well. This is a tool I think I've shown before and uh, maybe it was just the chisel but um, spring tools uh, actually ma manufactures this tool as well as a, uh, a chisel and I use the chisel to remove uh, old rivets and stuff. It works like a champ and again you can see it's spring loaded so this thing drives enough force I think it was uh, rated about 3500 PSI that you can generate so when I've got this tubing in the vise itself and I want to create my uh, set point for my uh, drill location, again for that number 36 drill bit, it's uh, really simple and easy to get a nice uh, starting point using uh, this particular uh, tool. Otherwise your drill bit's going to just uh, be all over the place on this round uh, tubing, especially being stainless itself and not soft like uh, maybe brass would be. So I ended up cutting off, uh, again you can see a piece of the uh, tubing itself and this is the length here that uh, works best for um, the uh, garage radio and it's pretty close to the same uh, length that I used on the uh, Peter Pan radio as well. And uh, you can see there's the uh, hole that I have uh, drilled in it. If that's uh, showing up, I'll use this as a pointer. And again, once that hole was drilled there with the uh, number 36 uh, drill bit, uh, I just used the, uh, you know, the tap tool. And I went in there and threaded that out. And then this is inserted again back down into the uh, knob. Here's one that I've uh, completed. And uh, you can see it. It's not glued in to the knob itself. And uh, there's really no need to do so. I thought about using epoxy and I reckon I could if I would uh, choose to do so with the screw in place. Or the, uh, again, that being the socket head set screw, it does not allow this uh, centerpiece to rotate. So when I crank this down on a uh, taper, and you can see here's one, and uh, let me just tighten this down here just a bit and I'll show you what I'm talking about. It won't, will not allow this thing to uh, spin because again my uh, set screw itself is long enough it uh, protrudes back into the uh, plastic material itself so it acts as a, a locking mechanism and uh, the other beauty about not using the epoxy itself I can get a screwdriver back in here it's a fairly tight fit but I can actually pull that insert back out if I uh, need to 
Now, you may ask uh, how I went about, uh, you know, drilling the uh, knob out itself. And uh, what I did, again, I've got my mat here. And you can see I don't have the uh, center located. Uh, but simply I can just set this down um, in a position as such here on my mat and uh, center it here in the quadrants and uh, just eyeball it basically. So again, I'm not looking straight down at it, but I can just come back across horizontally and vertically, connect the dots, and then again I just used uh, um, my uh, small screwdriver because I worked the uh, plastic uh, unlike the uh, garage knobs uh, which have set up now for uh, a good day uh, within maybe an hour or so after doing the uh, the curing so they were still relatively soft but I went into the center just created a set location and I found it easier instead of starting with a small uh, drill bit and increasing that uh, since I already had a little pilot hole there just from a screwdriver in the middle I just went straight to my uh, 3 8 inch uh, bit and the reason why is um, the other way when I actually did it, it had a tendency to uh, kind of grab on and it was hard to uh, hold the knob. Now again I did not do this in a bench or anything, I just did a freehand drill and I uh, held it right here in my hand and uh, just went as such. And uh, you know, you could use tape, uh, which I've done here, just to keep the depth uh, where you want it. But uh, there's some marks here in pencil. Uh, they're probably very faint right now, and that was the depth that I actually wanted to uh, make sure I did not exceed. And uh, in this case, I come up to about right here on the uh, knob itself, uh, depth-wise. And again, if it's not perfectly centered, you've got a little bit of wiggle room, you can move this around. So when you do put your uh, insert piece in, it gives you the flexibility to kind of square things up. And uh, you can see here's one I did. Again, this was freehand, and it, uh, it rotates uh, fairly true. It's uh, maybe not uh, perfect, but um, it's not bad by hand. A lot of the old wooden knobs are uh, that way anyway, so you really wouldn't even see the difference once it's installed. But uh, I just wanted to share that uh, with you guys again. That's the uh, material that I used. Um, I'm going to let this uh, lacquer here on the uh, knobs here cure for... Uh, maybe the rest of the day and then tomorrow if time permits I'll go in and uh, tap these as well and drill them out. Hopefully I won't mess them up and have to recast others. That's why I do have uh, one extra plus the original if I need it. So that would give me uh, two extras really if I uh, kind of get sloppy and mess one of these up. So uh, folks, I appreciate you joining. Again, I've got something else I'm going to try to uh, create a mold of. It will be a push button for a um, RCA radio. So um, I hope to create a video on that if I'm successful in doing so. If not, then uh, just disregard my comments here. But uh, Larry, Back to the Future uh, Radios, he had commented on my original uh, knobs and opened my mouth and said, uh, hey, uh, send me uh, one of your push buttons that you need and I'll uh, try to uh, mold and cast it as well. Again, the knobs are pretty straightforward. Push buttons are a little different story, but uh, I'll do my best and see what happens. So, uh, folks, anyway, thanks again for uh, watching uh, this particular uh, video series. Hopefully uh, more to come soon. Take care.